Hi, welcome to the Frugal Frell. I'm Suki, your host. Today we're going to make a wooden cleat. And uh, before we get started, please like, subscribe, and comment. It helps the channel out and it keeps the videos rolling on to you. Thank you so very much. Before we get started, I want to describe the three cleats that I have here in my hands. This is the final one we made out of hop horn beam. I shouldn't say final because we're probably going to make a bunch more of these. And we are going to clear coat this one. It's a beautiful wood. And just as a reminder, when you make these out of wood, please make the grain go in this direction like this. Otherwise, it will snap. And use a fairly clear piece of wood. You don't really want too many knots in here for lots of reasons, uh, for strength and also for ease of cutting. And get that one down. This one was made out of poplar. It cut a little rougher because the wood wasn't that good of wood, but we can clean that up. And in both the poplar one and this one, after they're installed, wooden plugs will be placed in those holes and shaved off smooth. And then they can be finished however you want to finish it finally. And since I'm going to burnish this one, I am going to gently make the plugs match the burnishing and I can do that with a dark stain. And then this is, this is your metal cleat. These are getting more difficult to find locally, uh, like a lot of things. And I spray painted this one to give it a better look so you could always do that. But after making these cleats, we decided that they were so beautiful that we're not going to use metal ones anymore. We're just going to make them out of wood. And that way we just have another thing that we can make from our property to use in our house. And cleats are handy for all kinds of things. I'm going to be using this for some shades I made. So let's get started. Tom marks a piece of wood already cut to the cleat width and depth using a wooden cleat blank pattern. There will be a link to the free PDF copy of our generic cleat pattern, which shows all the markings needed for overall symmetry and symmetrical alignment of the screw holes. Here is what the pattern looks like. The centers along the length and across the width are marked, as well as the screw holes. Plan to countersink those so that they can be plugged after the cleat is installed. Also, the width center and the rough cut lines for the cleat base are marked at this time. Tom just uses a small square and pencil to do this, making sure he aligns the woodblock pattern on the already dimensioned lumber. Tom sets a marking gauge on the top length of the cleat pattern, then uses that to mark the same line on the cleat blank. We need to make a flat wood pattern for making both the contours of the cleat base and the contours of the cleat top. That would be much easier than using an already contoured cleat. But since he has made a few of these, he just used the already made cleat. A flat pattern would be much more accurate. Tom 
Tom drills the screw holes first using the countersink bit on the drill, and after that he will change the bit to the appropriate size for the screws to be used when the cleats are installed. Next, Tom cuts the blank from the dimension stock using his trusty homemade all-purpose crosscut saw. Tom is marking the depth of the outer ends of the cleat using his marking gauge. After setting the gauge on the pattern blank depth for the outer ends of the cleat, he marks these on the cleat on which he is working. When hand sawing wood, it is always a good idea to score your straight cut cutting marks with a knife. Cut into that mark to make a place to start your saw. Scoring the wood helps to guide the saw blade on your cut lines. The outside edges of the base are now cut very accurately. Tom makes multiple cuts just shy of the marked contour lines of the cleat ends as viewed from the side. This process allows you to quickly clean away most of the wood waste with a chisel. This technique works well for many wood projects where one does not wish to use power tools. Here you can clearly see how well the chisel just takes away most of that wood waste because of those little vertical cuts. He repeats this on the opposite side. It is not necessary to get down to the final rough depth on the first pass. As a matter of fact, you may not want to do that because you don't want to accidentally break into the contour line. Just be patient, do this carefully until you're used to doing this, and pick up different sized chisels if you need to. When most of the waste is removed, you can begin to chisel away to the contour lines. Tom marks the cleat end contours as viewed from the top, just using one of his bench dog wedges as a straight edge. You could of course use anything you desire as a straight edge. There is not much waste to remove here, so Tom just starts to contour the top with a chisel. Just work carefully 
Work slowly if you're not used to doing this. Noticed that Tom does not try to chisel away the entire width but works back and forth, which allows him to cut more accurately and without unfortunate tear-outs. The larger chisel is allowing him to contour the actual base out to the cleat ends so that it's a nice, smooth transition. Tom smooths the cleat base to end with a jack plane. He has set the blade to only cut very shallow and he's being careful not to start the cuts past the center line but to work from the center line out to the ends of the side on which he is working. Here, Tom is using a smoothing plane on the top side of the cleat. Now Tom is going to do the final smoothing with a scraper blade. How much you scrape away is, of course, up to you. Depends on how smooth you want this. And also, if you want to get on the edges, he's cleaning up the cleat base side just a little bit with a chisel to make it straighter. We made multiple cleats today, and we hope you enjoyed learning how to do this. In this final picture, this is the cleat that was made out of the iron wood or horn beam. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment.